GE Aviation, a subsidiary of General Electric, is headquartered in Evandale, Ohio, outside Cincinnati. GE Aviation is among the top aircraft engine suppliers, and offers engines for the majority of commercial aircraft. GE Aviation is part of the General Electric conglomerate, which is one of the world's largest corporations. The division operated under the name of General Electric Aircraft Engines -E -E, until September 2005. GE Aviation's main competitors in the engine market are Rolls-Royce and Pratt & Whitney. GE operates two joint ventures with Safran Aircraft Engines of France, CFM International and CFM Materials. History Early efforts General Electric had a long history in steam turbine work, dating back to the 1900s. In 1903, they hired Sanford Alexander Moss, who started the development of turbosuperchargers at GE. This led to a series of record breaking flights over the next ten years. At first the role of high-altitude flight was limited, but in the years immediately prior to World War II they became standard equipment on practically all military aircraft. GE was a world leader in this technology, most other firms concentrated on the mechanically simpler supercharger driven by the engine itself, while GE had spent considerable effort developing the exhaust-driven turbo system that offered higher performance. This work made them the natural industrial partner to develop jet engines when Frank Whittle's W.1 engine was demonstrated to Hap Arnold in 1941. A production license was arranged in September, and several of the existing W.1 test engines shipped to the U.S. for study, where they were converted to U.S. manufacture as the IA. GE quickly started production of improved versions, the I-16 was produced in limited numbers starting in 1942, and the much more powerful I-40 followed in 1944, which went on to power the first U.S. combat-capable jet fighters, the P-80 Shooting Star. Early jet engine work took place at GE's Syracuse, New York steam turbine and Lynn, Massachusetts supercharger plants, but soon concentrated at the Lynn plants. On 31 July 1945 the Lynn plant became the Aircraft Gas Turbine Division. GE was repeatedly unable to deliver enough engines for Army and Navy demand, and production of the I-40 now known as the J-33 was also handed to Allison Engines in 1944. After the war ended, the Army cancelled its orders for GE-built J-33s and turned the entire production over to Allison, and the Syracuse plant closed. Topic military and civilian expansion These changes in fortune led to debate within the company about carrying on in the aircraft engine market. However, the engineers at Lynn pressed ahead with development of a new engine, the TG-180, which was designated J-35 by the U.S. military. Development funds were allotted in 1946 for a more powerful version of the same design, the TG-190. This engine finally emerged as the famed General Electric J-47, which saw great demand for several military aircraft. A second manufacturing facility near Cincinnati was opened. J-47 production ran to 30,000 engines by the time the lines closed down in 1956. Further development of the J-47 by Patrick Clark in 1957 led to the J-73, and from there into the much more powerful J-79. The J-79 was GE's second hit, leading to a production run of 17,000 in several different countries. The GE and Lockheed team that developed the J-79 and the F-104 Mach 2 fighter aircraft received the 1958 Collier Trophy for outstanding technical achievement in aviation. Other successes followed, including the T-58, and T-64 turboshaft engines, J-85 and F-404 turbojets. The TF-39 was the first high-bypass turbofan engine to enter production. 
entered into the C5 Galaxy contest in 1964 against similar designs from Curtis Wright and Pratt and Whitney. GE's entry was selected as the winner during the final down select in 1965. This led to a civilian model, the CF6, which was offered for the Lockheed L1011 and McDonnell Douglas DC-10 projects. Although Lockheed later changed their engine to the Rolls-Royce RB211, the DC-10 continued with the CF-6, and this success led to widespread sales on many large aircraft including the Boeing 747. Another military to civilian success followed when GE was selected to supply engines for the S3 Viking and Fairchild Republic A10 Thunderbolt II, developing a small high bypass engine using technologies from the TF 39. The resulting TF 34 was adapted to become the CF 34, whose wide variety of models powers many of the regional jets flying today. In the early 1970s, GE was also selected to develop a modern turboshaft engine for helicopter use, the T 700. It has been further developed as the CT 7 turboprop engine for regional transports. Topic commercial aviation powerplants In 1974 GE entered into an agreement with Snecma of France, forming CFM International to jointly produce a new mid-sized turbofan, which emerged as the CFM 56. A 50-50 joint partnership was formed with a new plant in Evendale, O to produce the design. At first sales were very difficult to come by, and the project was due to be cancelled. Only two weeks before this was to happen, in March 1979, several companies selected the CFM-56 to re-engine their existing Douglas DC-8 fleets. By July 2010, CFM International had delivered their 21,000th engine of the CFM-56 family, with an ongoing production rate of 1,250 per year, against a four-year production backlog. The success of the CFM led GE to join in several similar partnerships, including Garrett AirSearch for the CFE CFE 738, Pratt and Whitney on the Engine Alliance GP 7000, and more recently. Honda for the GE Honda Aero Engines small turbofan project. GE also continued development of their own lines, introducing new civilian models like the GE90, and military designs like the General Electric F110. <laughs> GE Aviation Today Then GEAE and competitor Rolls-Royce were selected by Boeing to power its new 787. GE Aviation's offering is the Gen X, a development of the GE90. GE Aviation also has a two-year exclusivity on the Boeing 747-8. The Lynn facility continues to assemble jet engines for the United States Department of Defense, subsidiary services and commercial operators. Engines assembled at this plant include the F-404, F-414, T-700, and CFE-738. The plant at Lynn also produces the minus -3 and minus -8 variants of the CF-34 regional jet engine, the CT-7 commercial turboprop power plant and commercial versions of the T-700 turboshaft which are also called the CT-7. The Evendale plant conducts final assembly for the CFM International's CFM-56, CF-6, as well as LM-6000, and LM-2500 power plants. The Durham, North Carolina facility conducts final assembly for the Leap X, Gen X, CFM-56, GE-90, GP-7200, and CF-34 power plants. Crucial parts for these engines are crafted in secondary GE aviation facilities, such as those in Bromont, Quebec, Hookset, New Hampshire, Wilmington, North Carolina, Madisonville, Kentucky and Rutland, Vermont, where the engine blades and vanes are manufactured. Smith's Group and General Electric announced on January 15, 2007 that the former was divesting Smith's Aerospace to the latter for GBP £2.4 billion, 4 billion. 
GE Aviation closed the transaction on May 4, 2007. Smith's Aerospace, which was an important supplier, became an operating subsidiary of GE Aviation known as GE Aviation Systems. This acquisition will reportedly give the combined unit the clout to resist pricing pressures from its two largest customers, Boeing Commercial Airplanes and EADS, Airbus. Analysts further assert that it enables General Electric to acquire assets similar to those it desired in its failed bid for Honeywell in 2000, along with the purchase of Smith's Aerospace. The purchase included opening the first university development center at Michigan Technological University in Houghton, Michigan, in the effort to work with engineering students to provide training in engineering and software development. The program has performed well and GE Aviation has announced further UDC openings at Kansas State University. In July 2008, governments in the Persian Gulf reached agreements with GE to expand engine maintenance operations there. The Wall Street Journal reported that Mubadala Development Company, which owns Abu Dhabi Aircraft Technologies, an overhaul and maintenance company, signed an agreement worth an estimated $8 billion with GE. Abu Dhabi Aircraft Technologies will maintain and overhaul GE engines used in commercial aircraft purchased by airlines based in the Persian Gulf. On December 23, 2012, GE announced that it has agreed to purchase the aviation business of Avio. SPA, an Italy-based manufacturer of aviation propulsion components and systems for civil and military aircraft, for $4.3 billion US .3 billion Euros. GE Aviation follows through to develop a supersonic engine concept for Arian with a configuration accommodating reasonably well requirements for supersonic speed, subsonic speed and noise levels. Topic additive manufacturing Recently, they have started incorporating 3D printing technologies in their engines and have incorporated the manufacturing process in the newly designed GE9X, the largest jet engine in the world. GE acquired Arkham EBM for electron beam melting, Concept Laser for laser melting, and material provider APNC. Metal casting improves through competition with metal additive manufacturing, for which GE Additive believes it will soon compete with metal forging which will then be enhanced in response. Additive manufacturing is focused on new builds but can be used for part replacement. When complexity rise, cost stays level like replacing a 300 parts turbine frame in one piece. The electron beam melting has good speed for economy, precision to reduce processing work, and size capability for larger parts. The hot process reduces stresses in the part and penetrates deeper than laser for thicker parts with coarser, cheaper metal powders. Additive techniques can be used across the engine and even in the over 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit (820 degrees Celsius) hot section. They are used in the CT7 combustor liner, for GE9X low-pressure turbine blades, the first rotating parts, and for 16 parts in the ATP, including an 80 parts heat exchanger consolidated into one. Products <laughs> 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 Turbojets IA 1942 J31 I16 1943 J33 I40 with later production by Allison 1945 J35 with later production by Allison 1946 J47 1948 J79 CJ805 1955 J85 CJ610 1958 Topic Afterburning turbofans F101 1970 F404 1978 and cancelled F412 F110 1984 F414 1995 
YF-120, cancelled, basis for F-136 F-136, with Rolls-Royce cancelled Low bypass turbofans CJ805-23 1960 F118 1989 Topic Light turbofans CF700 CFE 738 with Honeywell 1993 HF 120 with Honda 2003 TF 34 CF 34 1972 Affinity 2018 Topic high bypass turbofans TF39 1968 CF6 1970 CFM56 F108 with Snecma 1982 GE90 1994 GP7200 with Pratt and Whitney 2006 Gen X 2007 CFM Leap with Snecma 2016 Passport 2016 GE9X 2018 planned Topic Turboprops T thirty one, nineteen forty five T seven hundred, C T seven, nineteen seventy three GEH eighty, two thousands Catalyst, twenty eighteen Topic Prop fans GE thirty six, nineteen eighties. Topic Turbo shafts T fifty eight, nineteen fifty three T sixty four, nineteen sixty four T seven hundred, CT seven, nineteen seventy eight GE thirty eight, nineteen eighties. Topic Vehicle Propulsion L V one hundred with Honeywell Topic Industrial Aero Derivative and Marine Propulsion LM five hundred four point five megawatts derived from GETF thirty four LM one five zero zero seven 4 MW derived from GEJ79 LM160015 MW derived from GEF404 LM250025 to 35 MW derived from GETF39 and CF6-6 LM5035 MW derived from, GETF derived from GECF6-50 LM six thousand forty one to fifty two megawatts derived from GECF six minus eighty C two LM nine thousand sixty five megawatts derived from the GEGE ninety one hundred fifteen B LMS one hundred one hundred megawatts derived from GELM six thousand and frame gas turbine Topic See also La Chun Lindsay University Development Center